Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining us. My name is Jonathan Bass. I'm a content marketing manager over at Revenue Well, and uh, really excited today uh, to be here with Katie Franklin with Smile Advantage uh, to learn about um, membership programs. Actually, Katie and I have been talking about these for a couple months now and setting up the webinar, and uh, she's just really been dropping a lot of knowledge on me, so I'm, I'm really stoked about this webinar. Um, if you're unfamiliar, Smile Advantage is a nationwide company that helps offices design and implement membership programs. And uh, Katie is the director of it, and she will tell you everything you need to know to not only get it up and running, but to really, really maximize it. Um, this is a reminder as well that we will have a Q&A at the end of this webinar. So uh, leave questions for me as we go along. I'll answer them at the end. And um, also we'll be emailing a, a copy of this um once we have a recording to all registrants so without further ado katie the floor is yours awesome yeah thank you so much jonathan and thanks to all of you for joining in this afternoon we appreciate your time as jonathan mentioned i am katie franklin i'm the program director of smile advantage and our primary focus is to help practices to design implement track and promote their own in-office membership programs a little bit about me. Um, our company is based out of St. Louis, Missouri. I actually grew up in Illinois and graduated from the University of Illinois with a degree in human development and family studies. Right out of college, I actually taught for about four years, but quickly realized I would probably never have children of my own if I continued down the path of education. So I got out of education, found myself as a dental office manager in a practice in St. Louis, Missouri. And it was actually in our practice where I helped the dentist to start the Smile Advantage membership program five years ago. So I've been at the forefront of this company. I am super passionate about what I do, and I love being able to help other practices see the same kind of success from offering this membership model of care. So in our practice in St. Louis, the main reason why we started the membership program was because of the frustrations that both our practice and our patients were feeling. We had an insurance coordinator who spent 40 plus hours a week doing nothing but dealing with the hassles and headaches of dental insurance. And at the end of the day, not only were we paying her her salary to deal with the headaches, but we also were noticing that the insurance was eating away at our bottom line because of all of the fee reductions, the adjustments, so on and so forth. We also were frustrated for our patients' sake because our patients were coming to us they were confused. They didn't really ever know what to expect in terms of what they were going to pay and what they were going to get in terms of insurance coverage. And they were always asking us, are there any other options to turn to? It was never fun for us to have to break the news to a patient that while we always did our best to estimate what their out-of-pocket portion was going to be, once that claim processed, a lot of times there were a lot of unexpected surprises. And what we found was that like I said, our patients were confused, and it was really hurting the loyalty and the trust factor that our patients had with us. So that's when we decided that a solution was warranted, and we found that a solution that kind of addresses a lot of these frustrations is to start an in-office membership program. So an in-office membership program, um, you know, they're kind of the buzz lately. A lot, of, a lot of people are talking about them. But if you're unfamiliar with what a membership program is, I'll just kind of give you a brief overview. Um, it's essentially a subscription-based model to dentistry. So for a low monthly or annual fee, patients can sign up for your program, which will allow them to receive all of their preventive care, and it also allows them to receive additional discounts on treatment. These membership programs are clear, concise, and affordable, which we know is not the case with traditional dental insurance plans. The membership model has proven to be a model that is successful. It has proven over time to really work and really help practices maximize their success. And the reason for that is because it is a subscription-based model. And in this day and age, more and more consumers are wanting to be part of subscription-based models because it's cost-effective, it's convenient, and it provides a greater overall savings. We know that in dentistry, the fee system is a broken system. When you have a patient who's paying out of pocket, coming to your practice twice a year for cleanings, exams, and x-rays, every time you take that patient up front to check out, 
it's never fun to have to break the news to that patient that they owe 150, 200, 250 dollars. That's sticker shock to a lot of people. And it definitely does not motivate them to want to return in six months for their next three care appointment, nor does it motivate them to want to do any of the treatment that you proposed. Whereas with a subscription model, they pay up front for the year for preventive, and then they get additional discounts along the way. The membership concept has actually been around since the late 1970s, early 1980s, but it's become very prevalent in the last few years mainly due to all of the changes that we've seen and that we're up against in dealing with dental insurance. This is interesting information to share with you. You'll see on my slide here that our dental profession has actually seen significant growth since the late 1990s, 70% growth in fact. But dentist earnings have remained flat, have remained the same. And the major reason for that is the dilemma that we face in dealing with dental insurance. There were some statistics put out by the ADA that actually proved that dental insurance is no longer a sustainable model for our patients or our practices. One in three adults who have dental insurance never file a single claim within a year. So think of all of that money that's being paid in premium that the insurance companies are getting to pocket it's never making its way into your dental practices. Plus, not to mention all of those patients that are neglecting their oral health care. Also, 69% of adults who have insurance pay more into their plan than the benefits that they receive. So it's not the best overall option for our patients. And we know that dentists are being paid well below their market fees. So it's proven from the ADA and from, the, from all the statistics gathered that it's no longer a sustainable model for us. When I talk to a lot of dentists, this is essentially what they feel is happening to them. Every year, the cost of doing dentistry goes up, dental supplies increase, lab expenses increase, your, teams want to, your team members want to raise each year. So every year, your expenses keep going up, but every year, your reimbursements keep going down. And you're essentially feeling like this, like your practice is sinking. So when we decided to do our membership program, we were inspired by a CE course that I sat in at where I heard Dr. Charles Blair speak. And Dr. Blair was educating us on the fact that if you're going to play the insurance game, you need to find ways to be successful, to maximize your reimbursement, and to play the PPO game, which can be a very challenging and confusing game to play. The other thing that he said was, you can find ways to insulate your practice and to shift away from being so insurance dependent. And he suggested that the way of doing that was through offering an in-office membership program model. He also taught us that a membership program model is a great way for you to open your doors and to market your practice to help you grow a larger patient base of fee-for-service patients in your practice. Rather than being in network with every PPO possible and attracting all of those patients with insurance, this gives you the chance to regain some control and to attract more cash paying patients to your practice because of this program model that you offer. 28% of the population, which is 92 million Americans, are without dental insurance. And the number one reason why they avoid going to the dentist is because they don't have the insurance and they can't afford the fees. So this is an opportunity for you to market your practice and to attract them in. This is a big question that comes up a lot. Are membership programs legal? Here's what I can tell you. Every state is different. There are about 26 states that have very specific regulations in terms of how membership programs are structured and how they're implemented. What I would advise you to do, if you have a membership program in place or are thinking about starting one, definitely reach out and talk to your state insurance commissioner as well as your state dental board to understand exactly how you can structure a program to be above board in your state. Some of the common regulations that we see across many of the states is that you can't call your program insurance, you can't combine it with insurance, we also have found that in some states, the programs are, are required to be registered with the Department of Insurance 
and you have to obtain a license and pay a fee in order to be able to offer the program. You have to make sure that there's a direct contract in place that your patient sign that provides them all of the details of the membership program and what it's going to offer. And you also have to make sure that the patients are paying you directly. In a lot of states, if you're working with a company where the patients are signing up and paying the third party for the membership program, in a lot of states, they either have to be licensed or if they're not, it's considered fee splitting. So make sure that your membership program is a program in a way that it's a contract between you and your patients and patients are paying you directly. I do a lot of work with Dr. Charles Blair, as well as with um, a PPO negotiation company. And in working with them, I have learned over the years all of the rules um, that come in play in, in terms of cash discounts. I know I'm very familiar that many dentists are giving some sort of a cash discount to their uninsured patients. But in fact, it's considered illegal in many states and unethical by the ADA to offer cash discounts to your uninsured patients and not offer those same discounts to your insured patients. I know it seems completely absurd because we're already giving our patients with insurance a huge discount, but it's discriminatory if you don't offer the same discount to your patients with insurance. In fact, the only type of cash discount outside of a membership program that is legal for you to do is to give your patients a prepayment discount. So if patients are having work done, as long as they're paying for their treatment 24 hours or more in advance, you are able to give them a cash discount and not give those same discounts to your patients with insurance. The reason for that is because the insurance contracts don't allow for prepayment on treatment. Senior discounts come up a lot. I get a lot of offices that tell me, well, what about senior discounts? It's okay to give a senior discount as long as the senior discounts you're giving, you're giving to both your insured patients as well as your uninsured patients. So when offices kind of get, you know, this, this usually opens a lot of can of worms and offices kind of like, wait, what? This is crazy. That's where having a membership program in place allows you to continue giving those cash discounts to your uninsured patients and not having to worry about giving them to your insured patients. There are so many ways that your practice can benefit from having a membership program in place. So these next two slides, I wanna really touch on and help you to understand that if and when you have a membership program in place, I would really encourage you to look at the big picture of what it's doing for your practice. So first of all, it's great for patient retention. I know that dentists love to know the number of new patients coming into their practices each month. And that's a great number to know and to be aware of. But what's more important to understand that a lot of times is not being closely monitored is how many patients are leaving the practice each year. And on average, 13% of a patient base will leave a practice each year. Oftentimes they're leaving through the back door without us even noticing. And they're leaving because they've lost their insurance or just simply because they can no longer afford our fees. So having a membership program in place, getting your fee-for-service patients signed up to your membership program gives you the assurance that you're going to see those cash patients twice a year. And if you don't, then it's profit in your, po your pocket because they've already paid for it. We know that on average, patients who don't have insurance only visit the dentist once every 11 months. So this is a way to get those patients coming in more regularly. And again, it's going to give you that assurance that you're gonna see them twice a year. It's also gonna motivate them to do more treatment. So you're gonna see better treatment acceptance rates from these patients. The reason for that is because it's that subscription-based model. A group of Harvard students actually proved that people who belong to a subscription-based model spend more money because they have a secure feeling that they're getting a good deal. I prove that theory true every Sunday when I go to Costco. I always tell myself that I'm going in for three things. I walk out two hours later with a basket overloaded and a $400 receipt. The reason why that happens is because I'm stuck or trapped in the moment. I see all the great things, all the great deals, and I don't want to pass them up. Subscription programs 
motivate patients to spend more. Uh, we know that the uninsured patients are 50 to 70% less compliant on their treatment. So I have doctors telling me all the time, you know, my patients are pretty good about coming in twice a year, but I can never get them to accept treatment because of the extra expense. This is a great way to kind of flash that discount offering to them and motivate them to move forward with the work. As I mentioned, it's a great way for you to market your practice and to attract more new patients to the practice allowing you to grow a, a larger patient base of fee-for-service patients. It's also a great way to reactivate patients. So for that average 13% that's leaving your practice each year, reach out to them. Let them know that since they've been gone, you've implemented a great new membership program that can save them money that was never an option before. And you will find that a lot of times that's the incentive that they need to return to the practice. The other thing is, is that it's great with helping with patient conversion. So a lot of times patients who, especially if they're self-employed, they have self-funded insurance plans, a lot of times they're really frustrated with what they're paying and the coverage that they're getting, but they don't know any other options to turn to. So as they're complaining to you about all the work that they need done and how expensive it is and how limiting their coverage is, this gives you an opportunity to educate them on another option, your membership program that you ultimately control. The other thing is, is that I hear a lot of offices from year to year. They'll do a practice analysis or an insurance analysis and they'll decide, you know, we really need to drop out of these three PPOs. They're just killing us. We're, we're actually spending money to be in these PPOs rather than making money. Well, there's always the fear in doing that, that when you drop the PPOs, patients are going to drop you. So having a membership program in place for your patients to fall back on is a great option for them. It can help with retention when you do make those changes in your practice. Your entire team can benefit from the membership program model. Obviously for the front office, when they're dealing with membership patients, they don't, they don't have to call the insurance companies and verify benefits. They don't have to process claims. They don't have to deal with denials of coverage. They don't have to worry about collections, so on and so forth. It also helps to keep the schedule filled. It helps to keep butts in the chair. Like I said, it helps those patients to be motivated to come in twice a year and to do more of the treatment that you're proposing. You know, it's a way for you to turn your hygiene department into a profitable recurring subscription-based model, like the Netflix model. And for the dentist, it allows you to discuss comprehensive care with your patients without any restrictions. So rather than playing the insurance game and trying to break up, okay, you need these fillings and this crown, we're gonna do these fillings this year, we'll do the crown next year, because you're playing the insurance game, you can present the entire treatment plan to them, show them the total treatment discount that they're going to save, and you have no restrictions to worry about. Another question I get asked a lot, which type of practice, what dynamic of a practice should consider a membership program? And honestly, the answer is any practice. In fact, a lot of dental consultants are going around saying that membership programs are a competitive edge and you're really missing out if you don't have one. So let's talk about PPO offices for, for a minute. Obviously, PPO offices, you're attracting a lot of patients with insurance. This gives you that opportunity to grow a larger patient base of fee-for-service patients. Fee-for-service offices, less than 6% of practices remain fee-for-service these days. And as our profession continues to evolve and continues to change, these fee-for-service docs are starting to recognize that the competition's getting tough and that something needs to be done. A lot of times the only thing that they know to do is to join the PPOs. But we always say, before going down that path, try doing your own in-office membership program first. For any new dentist, um, especially coming out of school for the first time, you know, it's going to be, you know, you're going to be um, inundated with all of the PPOs that you can join. But the other thing to consider is having a membership program in place right from the beginning to help you grow that loyal patient base of subscription-based patients who are going to come in regularly. It's going to help to, you know, 
is going to help improve that trust factor and help you build a relationship with your patients by having this option in place right away. And then for retiring dentists, this is my favorite group because these guys give me a hard time. They often tell me, oh, Katie, I'm 70, 70 years old. I've been practicing dentistry for longer than you've been alive. And I don't need to start anything new. I'm tired. I'm old. I'm ready to hang it up. My team's tired. This is a great idea. I wish I would have met you 10 years ago, but no thank you. Well, I always tell those dentists, Doc, it's never too late to start something great. And I mean that because if you can start and implement a membership program now, you can get your patient signed up to this model. It can help to increase the overall practice profitability. So when you do look to sell the practice, it can hopefully help it to appraise for more. And any potential buyer that's looking to buy the practice is going to be very attracted to the fact that you have a membership program in place with these loyal subscription-based patients that are coming in regularly. So while it may seem like a daunting task, like I said, I always go back to the phrase, it's never too late to start something great. Obviously, patients are going to benefit from the program. It gives them access to quality, affordable dental care. It allows them to be more regular with their routine visits. And like I said, it motivates them to do the work that they continue to want to put off because of the extra expense. Patients will ask you, especially if you have a patient who currently has insurance but is thinking about dropping the insurance and signing up for your membership program. They'll say to you, well, how is your membership program a better option for me? My insurance is going to cover 50% of the crown that I need done. Your membership program is only going to give me a 20% discount. So I would be better off keeping the insurance. Well, you have to reel those patients in. Remind them that insurance is not insurance. It's a coupon, usually $1,000 a year. And once it's maxed out, they're out of benefit. So once it's used up, they're out of luck. More and more preventive services are being applied towards that yearly max. So it's leaving our patients with very little to nothing to spend on treatment. So as you explain all of this to them, and you can, you can highlight the benefits of your membership program. This membership program covers all of your preventive care. It doesn't eat away the yearly max. And that crown and all of that work that you need done, we're not going to have to phase it out. You're going to just continue to get that discount on all of the work that you're completing. Sometimes patients will need a visual to help them understand why this is a good option. My favorite visual to use is one like this. You can set this up in Excel. Basically create three different columns, a membership program column, a cash paying patient column, and a dental PPO column. And show your patients what they're gonna pay and what they're gonna get for regular routine services each year by being on the three different options. And this will essentially prove to your patients that the best option that's the most affordable and provides the best overall care is for them to be part of your membership program. If they still don't get it, then maybe show them this cartoon. Trust me, it's the only way if you want your insurance to cover it. So I can tell you that there are lots of different groups of people that are going to be attracted to the model that you have. Obviously, it's a no-brainer that patients without insurance are going to be very attracted to this program that you offer. We also find that patients who are underinsured or frustrated with their insurance plans, a lot of those patients will turn to this as an option as well. Baby boomers, the retired senior patients, love membership programs. 10,000 people a day turn the age of 65, retire, and lose their benefits. And when that happens, they often go missing from our practices because they can think of way better things that they're going to spend their fixed income on than coming to our offices. So this is a great way to help you retain and attract baby boomers to your practice because you're essentially being able to promote to them a benefit structure that's very similar to those insurance benefits that they've known for so long. A lot of young families are very attracted to this model as well because a lot of young families are either finding themselves without insurance or are finding that it's super expensive to care for and cover all of their family members on a family insurance plan. So a lot of times you can see success 
with getting a spouse and children converted off of the family plan and converted over to your membership program. Also millennials, millennials love membership programs. 80 million millennials are going to drive our future economy. They don't have near the benefits that their parents had. And a lot of millennials are still financially dependent on their parents. So find a way to promote this to the millennials or promote it to their parents. Um, we actually had an office this past Christmas. Genius idea. They sold Smile Advantage membership gift cards and they were promoting the gift card sales to their older patients, suggesting that they buy them and gift them to their children in their stockings at Christmas time. So these are just ideas of how you can promote this how you can get patients to be aware of this great opportunity that you're offering. If and when you decide to start a membership program, we always suggest that you focus on internally marketing the program to begin with. In time, you can do some more external marketing, but focus on promoting it to the patients that you have. And in your patient software system, I would suggest that you start by running two reports, patients without insurance, and patients who have been missing from your recare schedule. And start by targeting those two groups of patients first. Have office signage displayed around the practice. Simple, simple posters that can say, no dental insurance, no problem. Ask us today about our membership program. Get your entire team on board to talk about this. This needs to be an entire team approach. It cannot be the sole responsibility of your office manager, your insurance coordinator, so on and so forth. The entire team needs to talk it up. And actually, the best overall introduction of the program starts back in the hygiene operatories. The reason why I say that is because the hygienists are your patient's preventive care providers. And as they're spending 40 to 60 minutes with your patients, this is a great opportunity for them to educate them on this new program that you now, that you now have available. Hygienists don't need to be, you know, able to discuss the financial component of the program, but they should be able to introduce the overall concept and the benefits of why patients should consider, you know, being part of the program. So get the team on board to talk about it. Have the signage displayed. Put it on your website. When I say that, put it on the home page of your website. Don't because why? Because patients statistically, they will scroll up and down on the home page of your website. Well, what they won't do is they won't click through all the tabs. So if you have a potential new patient coming to your website for the first time, have this prominently displayed on the home page. If you bury this message on the fifth tab, seventh page down, there's a good chance patients are never gonna even learn about the fact that you offer this. So have it on the website. The other thing is, is Use your Revenue Well. I know many of you are Revenue Well customers. Revenue Well can help you to promote your membership program. So utilize all of the services that are available within Revenue Well software to help you market and promote this to your patients as well. Let me give you some examples. Revenue Well has the ability to create customized campaigns, email blast campaigns that can be sent out to your patients. And through the years, us being an affiliate partner of Revenue Well, we have helped offices to create lots of different email campaigns that can be blasted out to help them promote this. Here's some ideas. Have a general announcement email. So as you start to implement a program, blast out a campaign to all patients with emails, letting them know about your membership program. Other campaigns to consider. You can target your uninsured patients. You can target your inactive patients. You can target your patients who have outstanding treatment. You can target the retired seniors. And you can also target your insured patients. I would strongly recommend that during open enrollment period, as your patients with insurance are considering their options for next year, blast out an email to them, let them know about your membership program, and give them another option to consider. This is where you can see success with patient conversion. This just gives you some ideas. This is an office in Arizona that we work with. They started a membership program a couple of years ago. They used Revenue Well to blast out a general announcement to all of their patients that basically kind of promoted their overall program and what it offers to the patient. They also did a nice video to kind of tie it all in as well. 
this is another idea for you, an outstanding treatment campaign. So for those patients that have been putting off treatment, send an email to them. Let them know of the work that they need done. Explain your membership program to them. Explain and highlight what the overall treatment discount would be if they sign up for the membership program. And include information and links for financing options as well. Try to motivate those patients to call, sign up for the program, and start doing the work that they've been putting off for years. Above and beyond email blasts, Revenue Well can help in so many other ways, helping you to promote your membership program as well. So send out a newsletter through Revenue Well to promote your membership program. Let Revenue Well help you with your social media posts to drive awareness. And also utilize the fact that Revenue Well can mail postcards or letters to all of your patients to promote your membership program to them as well. Here's some examples of different marketing pieces that we've designed for offices. So like I said, your primary focus should be on marketing the program internally. Then in time, you may decide that you wanna do some more external marketing and some different ideas for you. Target the local small business owners. Let them know that your practice can offer that same benefit structure to their employees, but at a much more affordable price. A lot of small business owners are finding that they're providing dental benefits, and it's been proven that 40% of Americans who have dental insurance never even use their benefits in a given year. So a lot of money is being spent, a lot of benefits are being wasted, and because of that, from year to year, a lot of employers are deciding to drop coverage. Well, you can now educate them on the fact that your practice down the street offers this membership program and encourage business owners to consider offering this to their employees versus the traditional dental insurance plan. The thing that's nice about this for the small business owners is that they can offer the same benefit across the board to all employees, but they can basically only have to pay for the ones that actually choose to go to the dentist. Whereas with dental insurance, you have to sign everybody up. So marketing to small business owners can be very effective. Also marketing to families, young families, or marketing to, you know, different practices in your area that you know don't see children. You know, let them know that you'll see the children. This was an office in Maine, actually, that we work with. Um, they are a pediatric practice, and they reached out to a lot of GPs in their area, GPs who they know do not see children, and basically said, hey, we can take care of those kiddos for you, and we can allow those patients to sign up for this great membership program that we offer, which can make dentistry very affordable for these families. You can also do simple magazine and newspaper articles. I know that when I say newspaper article, it sounds so antiquated, but the reason why it's proven to be successful is because the retired seniors are the ones who diligently pick up their newspaper and read it each day. So having a simple article in the newspaper that promotes your membership program and your practice can be very effective as well. Another genius idea, pharmacy bag advertisement. This was an office in Texas. They decided to pay to do a marketing campaign with their local pharmacy. We designed the artwork that was printed on all the pharmacy bags. They got a ton of new patients from this campaign. And they found that it was a lot of retired seniors that were calling their practice signing up to become patients because they had gone, picked up their auto refill prescription at the pharmacy, saw the ad on the bag and called the office to sign up. So there's so many different ways that you can get the message out there. You just gotta think about, you know, who's, who's, your, tar who's your target audience and how are you going to promote it to them? Another idea, a community tear off sheet. You know, hang these at your local grocery store, at Panera Bread, wherever, at the library. Hang these community tear-off sheets around the area where it can promote your practice and your membership program, letting patients know that they don't need dental insurance to come to your practice. Retired seniors, designing a simple postcard or a flyer that can be used um, for you to take and drop off at different retirement communities can be very effective. A, a simple flyer that basically highlights why the membership program model that you offer can benefit those retired seniors and can be a better option for them over any Medicare supplement plan that they might be considering. Another example of a marketing piece for a family, um, 
we found that a lot of dentists from year to year, especially in the month of February, Dental Health Awareness Month, they will go around and do dental health presentations at the local school. You can you can get these um, you can get these lined up through the local school nurses, and it gives you an opportunity to go in, get the kids all pumped up about going to the dentist, and design a simple postcard or flyer that can go home with all the kiddos in their goodie bags, promoting your practice and your membership model of care. Okay. So let's get into the nitty gritty of what you're gonna call this thing and how you're gonna do it. So like I said early on, make sure that your membership program is not referred to as dental insurance. And make sure that your team does not get in a bad habit of telling your patients that this is your own in-office insurance plan, because it's not. Refer to it as a membership program, a wellness program, a dental savings plan, a VIP program, a SMILE membership. Get creative with it, but just make sure that you leave that word insurance out of the description. You must have a patient contract in place that spells out the details of the program and the patients basically read through and understand everything that it's going to offer them. Here are some things that must be on the contract. You have to have the disclaimer stated that this is not dental insurance. You can say, you know, this, this program is not dental insurance, rather a dental savings plan. It also has to state exactly what they're going to get, what they're going to pay, how long it's going to last, and what their refund options are. Those things all must be stated on the patient contract. We usually tell offices, keep your program simple. Don't get carried away. Don't convolute it. We always tell offices, consider offering one to three different plan options. Child, adult, and perio seem to be the three most standard options that we see. We also see a lot of offices wanting to offer a new patient versus an established patient plan. But keep, like I said, keep it simple. Don't get carried away with too many options. Once you decide the different plans that you're going to offer, then the next thing to decide is what services you're going to include. Typically, it's the preventive care services that are included. So cleanings, exams, x-rays, emergency visits, fluoride treatments, those are some pretty standard inclusions that we see. Usually the difference between a regular adult plan and a perio plan is that usually the adult plan will cover two prophies a year. The perio plan will cover three or four perio maintenance cleanings a year. So once you decide what services you want to include, then we recommend that you look at your master fee schedule. Total up what those included services would cost a patient out of pocket in that given year. And then our recommendation is to set your membership fee to be 80 to 90% of that total. The other thing to take into consideration is whether you're going to allow patients to pay monthly or yearly. I will tell you there's pros and cons to doing it both ways. In this day and age, everybody's looking for that monthly subscription plan. So a monthly option can be a very attractive option. However, it puts you at a risk that you're going to start discounting your program or your services and not receive your full fee. So we always recommend that if you are going to charge a monthly fee, that you consider charging a one-time processing fee and that you add on some sort of a surcharge to the cost of the yearly membership fee so that it inflates the price over the course of 12 months. By doing that, what we have found is that it incentivizes patients who can to just go ahead and pay up front for the year. The other thing that's crucial is that you have the setup to automatically renew each year. When you try to manually track and manage all of that, it can become a nightmare, and a lot of offices over the years have found that patients will slip through the cracks. They'll come in and they'll get a third cleaning for free before the office will realize, oh shoot, we were supposed to have renewed that plan six months ago. So have it set up where it's going to automatically renew each year. Another big question that I get asked is what about family plans? How do we, how do we discount families? Well, it's hard because every family is defined by a different number of people. So what we recommend is that on your contract, you spell out that the first member or the first two members will pay full price and then consider offering an additional discount on each additional membership that's being purchased. So maybe the first two members pay full price 
and then each additional member gets $50 off the cost of the yearly membership fee. That's how we suggest that you handle families. The other thing to consider is what discount are you going to offer on treatment? Most of the offices that we work with will offer somewhere between 10 to 20% discount. That's a loyalty discount that is given to your membership patients off of your master fee schedule. And keep in mind that the national average write-off is 45%. So the discount that you're giving to your insured patients is going to be far greater than the discount that you're likely going to start giving to these membership patients. So don't freak out. A lot of doctors will say to me, well, wait a minute, Katie, why would I start giving my fee for service patients a discount? They're paying me my full fee. Well, are they? Are they coming in twice a year? And are they accepting treatment? Probably the answer to one or both of those questions is no. So it would be far better for you to get 80 to 90% of your fee, see your patients more regularly, and do the work on them that they need, than get none of your fee if those patients aren't even coming to the practice. Plus, keep in mind, you're giving your patients with insurance a huge discount, and in this day and age, everybody's looking for a way to save money. So it's going to help you to retain and attract more fee-for-service patients by having this option available to them. Specialists can benefit from membership programs. In fact, pediatric practices and periodontists can benefit from having their own membership program in place. The reason why that is is because they're seeing patients on a regular routine basis. The other thing I want to suggest to you is that if you're going to have a membership program in place, reach out to your specialist and try to get them on board. Try to get them to agree that you will send them your cash paying patients and in return, they will honor a 10% discount to all of the membership patients that you refer to them. So that way it's a way to get the specialist on board. It's a way for you to send the specialist, the fee for service patients that need extra work. And it's a value add for your patients if and when you need to refer them out to be able to get that additional discount from the specialist as well. How are you gonna track all of this? <laughs> well, every software, every patient software, is, it's a little bit different on how we recommend that you do it. Kind of the overall gist of what we have found is that in your patient software, it's a, it's a matter of creating new service codes. It's a matter of using new adjustment types. It's a matter of using a new payment type. In some softwares, it's easiest to create a new fee schedule. And then, of course, you also have to make sure that you're, you're alerting the accounts with flags or alerts um, as to who the membership patients are. In our practice five years ago, this is, this is the kind of success that we saw. This is why the dentist who I was working for at the time, after he saw what this program was doing to his practice in the first 18 months, he decided that he was going to collaborate with two of his other uh, friends who were also dentists. He had me help them get similar programs up and going in their practices. And then the three of them started the, started the company. Here's what we saw in 18 months. 301 patients signed up to our membership program. So from the membership fees alone that they were paying to be part of our program, we generated a revenue of close to $110,000. Of those 301 patients, we closely tracked and monitored the treatment that we were proposing and what they were accepting and completing. So in 18 months, Dr. Sindelar proposed $254,000 of treatment, of which they accepted and completed 220,708. So an 87% treatment acceptance rate for our membership patients. So in 18 months, our practice generated an incremental revenue of $330,000, which was made up from the membership fees and the accepted and completed treatment that these patients were doing. Of those 301 patients, 74 were new patients to our practice, 27 were patients that we were able to reactivate. We were actually Revenue Well users as well, and we sent out a reactivation email blast campaign to the patients missing from our recare schedules in the last 24 to 36 months. We were able to bring back 27 of those lost patients because we promoted this concept to them. So over the last four, four and a half years, we've been recruiting other quality dentists to join with us and to come together under our brand. 
mile advantage. We know that there's, a, there's power in numbers. So the more of us there are working together for a common cause under a known trusted brand, the more successful we can all be. So we have been recruiting other dentists to work with us. Um, this is currently where we're at. Smile Advantage can be offered in all states. We currently represent in 30 states with over 300 locations now participating with us. If you decide to work with us, we have a very comprehensive package of services that we will offer you. First and foremost, we're going to help you design a program that is custom tailored to your practice and to your patients. So we give you guidance and suggestions, of course, but all of the final decisions are up to you. Once we have the design of the program in place, our graphic designer will provide for you proofs of all of your initial marketing materials that you're going to need to help you start implementing and marketing your program. Once you approve all of your proofs, we will print and ship all of those materials to your office. At that point, we will schedule two different trainings with your team. We're going to schedule one training with the entire staff to get everybody on board to educate them on the overall ins and outs of the program and to provide verbiage and scripts on how to present it and how to promote it. And we're going to discuss marketing strategies. The other training that we do is with your front office. What we do with the front office is we show them and train them on how to use our cloud-based tracking software. So we, we offer a, a tracking software that can allow for automatic payment processing, automatic yearly renewals, automatic communications with your patients, and it can provide you detailed metrics of how the program's performing in your practice. Our software is powered by Membercy which provides dental tracking software for over thousands of offices across the United States. So we will train your front office on how to use our software. Then we will also show your front office how to integrate all of this information into your patient software system as well. Legally, we've done our homework. When you work with us, we are going to make sure that the patient contract that we design for you meets all of the requirements and has all the I's dotted and the T's crossed for your state so that we can keep you above board and keep this legal for you in whatever state that you're, that you're practicing in. We also are going to help with marketing. Marketing is one of the things that we pride ourselves on. What we're going to do is we're going to brand your website. We're going to create a customized SEO landing page for your practice. We're going to help with Facebook ad campaigns. We're going to help with remarketing campaigns. We're going to give you access to the customized email blast campaigns that RevenueWell has created for Smile Advantage users. We're also going to allow you to work with our graphic designer one-on-one -on -one to provide you with unique customized marketing materials. So when you decide that you want to do some more external marketing, we will work with you to provide you with those unique pieces, not just templates, but things that are designed specifically for your practice. We also have companies on board that are giving our member docs discounts and rebates on different products and services, as well as offering continuing education opportunities to all of our member docs. So these are some additional perks that you receive from working with us. We will also work with you to try and recruit your specialists to come on board to be part of the overall network as well. Why not do it on your own? Well, I'm not discouraging you from doing that because I did it on my own. It can be done. I can just tell you that when you're first getting started, you don't have any experience or any guidance to go off of, and it's a huge undertaking that requires a lot of research, time, and energy. And day in and day out, I know from experience that we often have a million things on our plates to do. So this is one of those great ideas that often gets pushed aside, and it's difficult to get started. For those of you who have a program in place, a lot of times the complaints that I hear is that it's difficult to manage, it's difficult to track, it's difficult to promote and market. So this is an opportunity for you to work with a company that can help you ramp up your program and take it to the next level. Why us? Well, I can tell you that we are an industry leader in membership programs. We've been around for five years. Our team is very passionate about what we do and we are very experienced not only in dentistry, but in membership programs too. All of our team members actually have experience working in a dental practice. 
So we understand how to help you design these programs. We also give you access to the tracking software, which makes it easy for administration and management of your program. And our marketing support is above and beyond what any other company will offer you, is what we've been told. Again, you get to work with our graphic designer to help you achieve all of your marketing, all of your marketing needs with very quick turnaround time. The best part is that we don't nickel and dime you. So unlike a lot of our competitors, we don't charge a per member per month processing fee, there's no administrative fees, and we do not charge an a la carte service. All of the services that we offer are included in a fixed monthly fee. Here's our pricing structure. We have a one-time setup fee of $6.95 plus a monthly fee of $3.49. And like I said, all of our services are included in that fee. The webinar promotion that we're offering you as kind of a thank you for your time and for joining on with us today is from now through the end of the day tomorrow. So five o'clock Central Standard Time on Friday, July 12th, if you're interested in working with us, we will waive our setup fee for you. We will also reduce our monthly payments for the first year. So instead of paying $3.49 a month, we will reduce your payments to $2.49 a month. So it's a total savings of $1,895 if you're interested in working with us. And that's a, that's a webinar promotion just for you guys as a thank you for joining on today. If you are interested in getting started, you can contact me. We work at your pace. Um, the quickest we can get you up and going is two weeks, but it usually on average takes a practice about a month. I know that Jonathan has questions coming in, so I'm gonna take some time to answer those. I'm also gonna share my contact information with you. This is my cell number as well as my email. So if you have any questions, if you want to take advantage of the promotion, if you're interested in getting started, please reach out to me. I would love to talk to you guys. Again, thank you for your time. Jonathan, I will hand it back over to you to uh, answer any other questions we have. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, man, there's so much to unpack right there. I mean, like some of my takeaways are just the amount of revenue that you drove from membership fees alone in your practice. like. 110,000 and um, I really liked your idea of marketing to small businesses uh, to me that seems like a, a, a quick win where you can get one business and potentially all of the people that work for them uh, so those, right. you know just kind of looking through my notes those are two of my big takeaways right there um, we do have some questions so I'm gonna dive Great. right in if anybody out there still has questions yeah. we're still accepting them um, let me see here we have somebody who is curious about like recourse and grievance resolution protocol when it comes to a membership program. In terms of like patients that sign up and they want to get like back out? I believe so, yes. Okay. So on your patient contracts, we do suggest that you state it on there that the program is good for one year, that it's use it or lose it, it's non-refundable, non-transferable. Um, there are situations that will come up from time to time where patients will pass away or patients will move out of the state because of job relocations. And so you can always make exceptions to your rule, but it is always best to state the disclaimer that it's good for one year, non-refundable. And then if you want to make exceptions and work with those patients or those families um, and maybe, you know, kind of do an audit of their account to see when they signed up, what they've paid, what services they've had, and then determine a partial refund that you're willing to give them. Um, that can be kind of one way to kind of help, you know, through some of those some of those issues that may come up. The other thing to keep in mind is that many many states uh, do require that you allow patients to opt out of the program for a full refund within the first 30 days of enrollment as long as no services have been rendered. So if that's a rule of your state, make sure that that is stated on your contract, but that's where doing your legal research and understanding what those different rules and regulations are, um, are you know, it's super important that you do that. So all of that can be stated for the patient to read. Beautiful. Uh, let's see here. What else do we have? Oh, um, how would a membership program work with regards to like a group practice or multi-office? 
Yeah. So we actually have um, a couple of group practices that we work with. And I'll tell you, every group practice that we work with kind of has this structured in a different way. So sometimes if the group practice all operates under one checking account, you can actually offer the same plan, the same price points um, across all locations because, you know, it's essentially all being deposited into the same account at the end of the day. Other group practices that have different checking accounts, they want to run their programs a little bit differently. And in that situation, different programs can be designed for the different locations. So it kind of depends on the dynamic of the group practice. Um, but it certainly can be done. Um, and like I said, we do have several group practices that we currently work with. Um, let's see, we have a couple state specific questions. Um, okay. So for a dentist practicing in Texas, do they need to register for a license? And I'll just double up right now. Um, uh, we have somebody from Connecticut wondering if there are any special regulatory requirements for them. So actually both states are good. Connecticut is probably a little bit easier than Texas. Connecticut does not regulate membership programs. They truly only regulate um, insurance plans. So in Connecticut, as long as you have it structured in a way where it's the direct contract between you and your patients, patients are paying you directly, you're good to go. In the state of Texas, um, they are big on DMPOs, direct medical provider organizations, and it really comes down to how you structure your program in the state of Texas. Um, there's a lot of offices in Texas where the membership program will start to look and feel a lot like a discount program or a discount plan that's offered through the insurance companies. Those do have to be licensed with the state. But if you stick to what I suggested a few slides ago where I talked about having a membership fee with the services that it includes, a set discount percentage that you give on any additional treatment, and patients are paying you directly for the membership fee and all of the treatment, and there's no set fee schedule in place, you're good to go in Texas. Um, any of those state-specific questions, if you want to email me, I, I would be happy to share with you, um, you know, our state-specific research as well. Okay, excellent. Um, let's see here. Um, with regards to fee schedules for patients, I know you went over uh, monthly versus annually. Um, can mm -hmm. you touch on that one more time? Yes, yes. So if, patient, so if you're going to allow patients the option to pay either monthly or annually, what we would suggest that you do for patients who are choosing the monthly option, you should consider charging a one-time enrollment fee or a one-time processing fee. A lot of offices will charge somewhere between like $50 to $100 for that one-time fee. And then we always recommend that you add a surcharge onto the cost of the yearly membership fee. So for example, if you're gonna charge $350 a year for your adult plan, your monthly payment option may state that monthly payments are available for a 20% surcharge, which would mean that your $350 yearly plan will end up costing the patient $420 for the year, which will equate to a $35 a month payment. The reason why we suggest the enrollment fee and the surcharge is because it will essentially inflate the overall cost of that plan option and so what we have found through the years is that when you do that, patients that can go ahead and just pay it up front will do so because it provides them a greater overall savings. Um, there is a risk that you take in allowing patients to pay monthly. There's always that risk that they're going to start paying, and there's never a guarantee that you're going to collect your full annual membership fee. So that's why we suggest adding on those additional fees. Okay, let's see here. Um, we have an individual who says they have a membership program going. I believe it's an internal one. Um, okay. What's their advantage for taking that and moving it over to you with My Smile Advantage? Basically helping them to ramp it up. 
um, you know, whatever they're, whatever they're currently offering can be the exact same program that they offer through us. We can just fine tune it, um, make sure that the team's on board and educated to effectively promote it and talk about it, make sure that the tracking's being done correctly. We can provide them access to our cloud-based tracking software, which can kind of help to streamline a lot of the processes for them. So right now internally, they're having to manage membership payments, they're having to manage renewals, um, they're having to communicate with patients about the membership, so on and so forth. And by working with us and having access to our cloud-based software, all of those processes can be automated. So it really eases up the overall responsibility of the front office. Um, and then of course, the marketing support, being able to design for you, you know, some of those unique marketing pieces to help you promote the program and kind of get the message outside of your four walls is definitely something that we would work towards as well. Um, and then, of course, the extra perks like the Revity Well campaigns, discounts and rebates, helping to get your specialists on board. Um, those are all, all great things that can be achieved by working with a company like ours. Uh, I believe that's all the questions we have. So, Katie, uh, anything else you'd like to say before we uh, sign off here? I, I think I'm good. I appreciate the opportunity, Jonathan. And again, you guys feel free to reach out to me with any questions. I'll be happy to help and would love to hear from you. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Uh, I learned a lot. I hope everybody else did. Um, and again, we will be sending a recording of this as soon as we have it. So thank you again. That's and great. everybody have a nice day. Thank you. Bye-bye.